All right, thank you for listening in. Uh, as you've seen, we've changed locations to a high-tech gear facility, and we're going to be talking about uh, statistics lesson three, so statistics from a gear lesson three, and what we're going to be talking about today is scatter plots, correlation, and regression. And so, first of all, we're going to talk about scatter plots. So, what we use scatter plots for is if we have two variables that are both quantitative. So we have two variables, but we both have numbers to them. So for example, if we had, let's say, plants, so we were measuring some plants, so we had we wanted to know relationship between plant height, so I, how tall a plant is, and let's say number of seeds. Or another example might be if we wanted to measure for measuring our golly. And we want to know the relationship between the age and the weight of our golly. All right, so we can measure the height of a plant. We have some number. We can measure the number of seeds. That's a number. Age is a number. Weight is a number. These are not categories, right? If you have categorical variables, you have to use something different. So what we're going to do if you do this, um, to do this, the first thing that you want to do uh, is first of all you want to decide if one variable explains the other. So for example, if you say of age of our golly, so age of our golly might explain the weight of our golly, but the weight of our golly doesn't explain the age. Right? So this is so for here you would say the age age is the explanatory variable. And you would say that weight is the response variable. Okay, so this is a response, this is explanatory. If you were looking at a plant and you were saying plant height versus number of seeds, or, well, so plant height and number of seeds, you'd say this is not necessarily a relationship where one explains the other. They're just kind of the same. Now maybe you would think that plant height does explain number of seeds rather than number of seeds explaining plant height. But but it may not. So you need to think about whether your variables or have an explanatory in response or not. So maybe for a golly you'd think maybe if you're measuring weight and you're measuring horn size, right, then you would think there's no clear way here to say that well, horn size explains weight, or that weight explains horn size. They're just two variables. They're just different. You're measuring both of them, but one does not explain the other. So the first thing that you need to th think about is if you have an explanatory response, an explanatory variable, and a response variable. If you're graphing these, um, you want to treat the explanatory variable. You want to put that on the x-axis. So if there's no relationship, it doesn't matter which one you put. But if you have a scatter plot. So we're going to make a scatter plot here. The first thing you want to do is you're going to make on the x-axis. So here, if you do between age and weight, so we'd, on the x-axis, we said that age is the explanatory variable. So we'd have age, and maybe this goes from zero to, say, what's the oldest argali? Maybe it gets up to 14 years. Um, and then on the y-axis, so again, this is the x-axis. This is the y-axis. And in here, then, we would have weight. And then what you do is you want to measure these. So we were, you want to just plot these. So let's say that you have, and what you might see for age and weight here is that you'd probably see some relationship, I'm guessing, that would look like this. So you measured a lot of argali here. And essentially, you have a relationship that looks like that. Um, we're going to graph two things here. Um, I'm going to grab a tissue to erase what I wrote here, and we can we can write out the other. So the other we're going to look at is plant height and number of seeds, which I'm now going to delete this to. Um, so let's say the other here we had plant height. And I'm going to put height here on the x-axis. And I'm going to put number of seeds. So you counted number of seeds on this plant. 
you count and you measure the height, and maybe you have some relationship that goes like this. Okay, that's the first thing you want to do, is if you have two quantitative variables, the first thing that you want to do is you want to just graph them out in a scatter plot. Now, as a brief aside here, if you have a categorical variable and a numerical var variable, so for example, if you wanted to know the number of seeds, and instead of height here, you had different species of plants. So you had species A, species B, species C, and species D. Um, you can't, species A, B, C, D, they're not quantitative. They're not numerical, right? They're just different. So those are categorical. So what you'd want to do is either, you could either do, if you have categorical data, there are two ways you can graph it. You can either use a box plot, box plot here it would look like this. Um, so on the x-axis you would have a species A, species B, so you always put the explanatory variable here with a categorical variable here and then D. And then you might put in here is number of seeds. And what a box plot does um, is that it creates a box. Here's what it, what it looks like. And then this one might be like that. Maybe this one's down here. And this one's up here. What a box plot does is that what, it, what does all this mean is that here, this the line here in the middle of, or about in the middle of the box, is the median. It is not the mean, it is the median. Right, it's the 50th percentile. This bottom point is the 25th percentile. This top point is the 70th, 75th percentile. And these, this is the lower 5% and this is the top 95%. So what this means is that essentially you can look, use a box plot to, and explains a lot of variation. It explains your, where your midpoint is and then a lot of the spread and where that spread lies. So, and then you can use these to compare between these different species. So another way, now that's a lot of information, and it's kind of messy. So another way to you could graph this if you have a categorical variable is to actually use a bar graph. And a bar graph, you'd have a similar idea. So let's say you had A, B, C, and D, and here's number of seeds. Number of seeds. Um, and instead of just having, showing all this variation, you just show the mean. Use your graph, you could graph the median too, but usually you graph um, in a bar graph, you bar you graph the mean, and then you have the standard error, right? And this one would be maybe up here with the standard error, and C was a little lower, so it's here, and then D was higher, and up here. And so what this is is that here, the top of this bar graph is the mean, and this is the standard error. We haven't talked about standard error yet, um, but we'll get to it. So, but essentially, so we're talking about graphing here. If you have categorical variables, if you have a categorical variable and a numerical, you can either do a box plot. The advantage of a box plot is that it provides a lot of information about the spread, but it's messier. It's harder to interpret. Um, it's just, it's, well, it's not harder to interpret. It's just harder to see clear patterns. Or you can do a bar graph where it's easier to see clear patterns. Um, and they, but, the disadvantages that they show less variation. So you don't get as much information about what's happening in A. All you know is about where the mean is um, and a little bit about the spread, um, but you don't know much about anything else. So, okay, so that's, if you do have categorical variables, you want to use either a box plot or a bar graph. That's what we're going to talk about that. So the rest of this we're going to talk about, focus on when you have two quantitative variables. So I'm going to erase this. Oh, I don't want to leave that height there. So you have two quantitative var variables. And you now graph them out in these, um, in these nice graphs. The first thing, really what you're doing for, is that you want to look at relationships between these, and you want to look for patterns in them. So some, some things you want to look for is, is the relationship positive, or is it negative? Does it fit a line like this does? 
or is it a curve? Are there outliers? So let's say your data actually looked like this. But that's an outlier. Or does it have clusters? So maybe you have two clusters. Maybe you point a bunch of points here and then a bunch of points here. So I'm going to talk about how you deal with this in the next lesson. Um, but for now, what you need to be aware of is just a couple of things. Is I want if you have an outlier, you need to think about what you're going to do with it. And if you have clusters, especially if you have two clear clusters like this, it probably doesn't make sense to try to fit a line here. Right? A better way to try to analyze these data is just to compare this group to this group. So if this is plant height, let's say, and again, say this is number of seeds. So in this case, you have a negative relationship. What it might make sense is to say, oh, I have a group of plants that are short plants, and I'm going to compare them to my tall plants. Instead of doing regression, you're just going to compare, you're going to tr make, that you're going to, this is a quantitative variable right now, but you're going to make it a categorical variable. You're going to say, oh, these are my short plants and these are my tall plants. Um, and then, so the other thing you want to look for is the outliers. Again, we're not going to talk about, there's some technical stuff, how to deal with this. We're going to talk about that in the next lesson because um, first you need to understand correlation and you need to understand regression before you can do that, before you can do this.